Muy buenas, soy Abigail de Amarose y hoy estaremos mirando Fluency Accelerator. So, <clears throat> empezamos con el Grammar Point and we are looking at the difference between say and tell. So, a good way to remember, a good trick to remember the difference is say is decir o comentar and tell is contar, okay? Just so you know, they're both irregular. So say goes to said and tell goes to told, okay? If we are looking at the three columns of the verbs, um, it would be say, said, said, and tell, told, told, okay? So it's the same for the simple past and also for the uh, past participle. Okay, let's continue. So when we're using say, we use words to express information, a viewpoint or a feeling. Okay, um, so these are a few examples. What did he say to you? He said he was going to the shop to get some milk. What did you say? I said I was hungry. They didn't say what time they would be back. We want to say thank you for all your hard work. So in all of these instances, we're using say to comment or to show a viewpoint, right? Um, we're using it to express information and we're also using it to express a feeling. So what does she say to you? So that's a viewpoint. He said he was going to the shop to get some milk. So that would be to express information. What did you say? So what did you comment, right? I said I was hungry. So that's also a viewpoint. They, did, they didn't say what time they would be back. So that would also be um, to express information. We want to say thank you for all your hard work. We want to comment on all your hard work and we want to express a feeling. In this case, it's a feeling of gratitude, right? So that's when we use say. Normally, when we use say, we, it does come along with a few expressions, okay? So let's have a look at some of the expressions we use with say. So I'm sure some of these you've, you've heard before. Um, to say please and thank you, to say sorry, to say a prayer, to say hi or goodbye, to say cheese, to say yes or no, and to say something out loud in al yeah? So to say please or thank you, to say sorry, to say a prayer, to say hi or goodbye, to say cheese, you know, everyone knows that we say cheese when we're <laughs> taking a photo, right? Uh, say yes or no, or to say out loud. Okay, let's have a look at tell. So to express a message to someone verbally or in writing, so remember, we are expressing a message to someone verbally or in writing. So let's have a look. Can you please tell me where the toilet is? You should have told me you were still here. What did you tell him? She told me a joke. She told me a story. He always tells the truth. And again, with tell, we have a load of expressions that we use. So let's have a look at some of the expressions. To tell the truth, tell a lie, to tell the time, to tell a secret, to tell a story, to tell a joke. So, um, to tell the truth, so decir la verdad, to tell a lie, decir una mentira, <laughs> to tell the time, so um, normally we use this expression when we 
the majority of the time you'll hear it when we're talking about children, whether they can tell the time or not, um, whether they can read the time, no, whether they can, um, if whether they know how to tell the time on an, a clock. Yeah, so to tell the time, could you tell me the time also as an expression? We could use that. Um, but yeah, so to tell the time, to tell a secret, to tell a story. And a lot of the time people get mixed up with story and history because in um, Spanish, it's the same thing. Um, cuéntame la historia o um, la historia de los Aztecas, por ejemplo, right? So um, in English, they're two different words. So remember that story is una historia que alguien te cuenta and uh, history is specifically and only for ancient times, history, <laughs> yeah? So that's a good one to remember and to tell a joke. So to contar una broma, un chiste, right? So to tell a joke. Okay, let's go on to have a look at some examples. Um, so could you please tell me the time? Yeah. Um, could you please tell me a story? Could you please tell me a joke? Or Adam is very good at telling jokes. Yeah. Um, Miriam always tells the truth. Okay. Don't uh, tell a lie. Tell me the truth. Yeah. So these are all the examples of how we would use these expressions. Okay. Let's go on to uh, look at the common mistakes that a lot of people make. Um, a lot of the mistakes that I hear um, when teaching English to Spanish speakers. So the first one is she said me. Now, she said me is wrong because we need to. We have to put to me. It's just like when um, in Spanish you say um, decir algo a alguien, right? Uh, it's the same concept here. So you always say, she said to me, he said to me, they said to me. Um, another common mistake I hear is he told to me. Again, very wrong. We In this case, we don't use to, we remove to and we say, he told me. Yeah, he told to me, again, another mistake without to. So he um, he told me would be the correct way of using that structure. Say me everything, cuéntame todo, and we translate literally, and sometimes it doesn't make sense. So we would say, tell me everything, cuéntame, yeah, tell me everything, and say us. So they say us, um, or they said us, no. So they said to us, or they say to us, yeah. So just make a note of that um, and try and avoid making those mistakes. Okay, so what we're going to do now is practice. Um, we're going to practice with whether we put say or whether we put tell. Um, so if you want, you can, once I read the question, you can pause, um, say what you think, and then we'll look at the answer straight after. So let's start. So the first one is, can you... Mm, me where the local supermarket is, please. Can you mm, me where the local supermarket is, please? And the correct answer is, can you tell me where the local supermarket is, please? Okay, let's go to the next one. Ruby, mm, me you were ill. Ruby, beep, me you were ill. And the correct answer is, Ruby told me you were ill. Okay, next. Why didn't you, mm, you were tired? Why didn't you, mm, you were tired? And the correct answer is, why didn't you say you were tired? Why didn't you say you were tired? Next one, he mm, me a funny story. He beep me a funny story. And the correct answer is, 
he told me a funny story. He told me a funny story. The next one, he beep, his mum name was Maria. He beep, his mum name was Maria. And the correct answer is, he said his mum's name was Maria. He said his mum's name was Maria. Okay. And the last one we have is, what was he trying to beep? What was he trying to beep? And the correct answer is, what was he trying to say? Yeah. What was he trying to say? Okay, well, I hope that's been useful. Let's go on to our phrasal verbs for this fluency accelerator. Um, and the first phrasal verb that we have is to chicken out. And chicken out means to be scared of something. So to avoid doing or finishing a task due to fear. The example we have is we were going to go on a roller coaster, the Montaña Rusa, I think, in Espanol, but we chickened out at the last minute. So we were going to go on a roller coaster but we chickened out at the last minute. Okay, the second phrasal verb we have is to clear something out. To clear something out, and it means to tidy a place by getting or throwing things that you don't want. Yeah, so throwing things away um, that you're never going to use um, could be junk. Yeah. So the ex the example we have is we're moving next week, so I need to clear out the storeroom because I have a lot of junk that I haven't used for years. So we're moving next week, so I need to clear out the storeroom because I have a lot of junk that I haven't used for years. Okay, and the next one we have, the next phrasal verb we have is to come across. And to come across um, it does mean various uh, things, but the first way in which um, the first way we're going to look at this is um, as a specific impression, the, the impression you give off, yeah, the way you come across to someone else, the perspective you give someone else. So um, to give a specific impression. And the example that we have is she comes across as a very confident woman. I wonder if that truly is the case. She comes across as a very confident woman. I wonder if that truly is the case. Okay, so to come across to someone else. Okay, so now we're going on to our expressions. I hope you're ready. Let's start. So the first expression we have is to have an eye for something or to have a good eye for something. They mean the both, they both mean the same thing, um, but sometimes you might hear good eye. So to have an eye for something, to have a good eye for something. Tener un buen ojo por algo. Let's have a look at some examples. He is an amazing artist. He has a good eye for detail. He's amazing art. He is an amazing artist. He has a good eye for detail. I love all her artists. She really has an eye for talent. I love all her artists. She has an amazing eye for talent. I'll ask Matthew because he has an eye for design. I'll ask Matthew because he has an eye for design. OK, so those are the examples for our first expression. Let's have a look at the second one. To look someone in the eye. Yeah, so to mirar a alguien en los ojos. So look me straight in the eye if you're telling the truth. Ha ha. And we have telling the truth, which we saw earlier um, at the beginning of this video. Yeah. So look me straight in the eye if you're telling the truth. He looked me dead in the eye and said, I'm sorry. He looked me dead in the eye and said, I'm sorry. So dead in the eye is mirando los ojos 
fijamente, like sin mover los ojos, clavados. Yeah, so he looked me dead in the eye and said, I'm sorry. I know he's lying because he never looks me in the eye. I know he's lying because he never looks me in the eye. So sé que está mintiendo porque nunca me miran los ojos. Vale? So that is your second expression um, with the word I. Let's go to our accent tip. And in this session, we are looking at the TH sound. Um, and the TH sound is you need to put your tongue in between your teeth like that. And it's like the Spanish zapato. So teeth, if you even say the word teeth, it has a TH at the end. And just keep practicing that sound so it sounds natural to you. Teeth, teeth, teeth. And so what we're going to do, we're going to practice with this sound. So I want you to pause and I want you to practice saying these words. And when you press play, I will repeat them and we can practice together. Okay, so the first one is these, these, this, this, the, or the, the, or the, they, they, thesis, thesis, theme, theme. So I want you to give these a try. And now we're going to go on to practice with some sentences. My thumb was pricked by a thorn on Thursday. My thumb was pricked by a thorn on Thursday. The athlete thought 30 thoughts. The athlete thought 30 thoughts. The theme is thoughtful though thorough. The theme is thoughtful though thorough. I hope that this has been useful. Espero que has disfrutado. Um, y muchas gracias por ver este video. Si quieres um, saber un poco más cómo podemos practicar el acento más profundamente cada sábado por la mañana a las 11 set, um, hago seminarios donde miramos el acento, uh, la gramática, speaking, um, y sobre todo mejorando el inglés. Entonces, si quieres... Um, uh, reservar tu espacio hay un link abajo en la descripción y nos veremos allí cada sábado hasta luego